Hi, my name is Josephine and these are my creatures. Hello and welcome back to my channel. After finishing the Fruity Girls collab, me and Nick from I Could Do That DIY started chatting on Instagram about hosting our own collab. We were tossing ideas around and ended up landing on bugs. Well, dolls inspired by bugs. We invited some friends to come and join us and they are Jackie O, Enchantarium, Creepy Kitty Creations and Lady Dynamite Creates. Go check out everyone's videos to see what they came up with. Their videos will be linked down below. I have created three dolls inspired by bugs already, so I really had to think hard what kind of insect I wanted to pick. One of my all-time favorite dolls is this sunset fairy that was inspired by a Madagascan sunset moth, but she isn't a classic moth doll, only the wings resemble the insect. So I went to my Pinterest and started to search moths and I found so many pretty ones, like this one, this one, and this one. But in the end, I decided to choose this one. It's called Automaris Francae. I chose it because I really like the colors, especially the yellow accents. I hit a jackpot and was able to snag a huge doll lot for 30 euros with a help of a friend. This used Luna Matthews doll was one of my finds. She was just too perfect for this project to pass up on. I know the moth that I chose has a pink body, but I think the yellow will also work as the wings have some yellow in them too. And I like the yellow way more than pink. But don't worry guys, I will still be including some pink as an accent color. I really liked the extra posability of my forearmed praying mantis doll. So I will be giving this doll some extra arms as well, and this way she will feel more insect-like. I decided to use this Cleo Denial doll as a donor for the arms. Her legs are super floppy and she is in a bad state all around. Removing the first arm was easy, it popped right out. But the second one I had to use a knife to cut the connecting piece of plastic. I remove the small piece of plastic. I will not be needing it as I have plans to replace it with elastic, BJD style. Now we have a pair of loose arms that I will attach later down the video. In the meantime, I will finish off the prep work. The head comes off easy after I have warmed it up with hot water. She has a factory defect on her neck hole. Luckily, this is an easy fix with an X-Acto blade, but I'm not going to cut it off yet, even though I really wanted to. I remove the rest of the hair with needle nose pliers. And of course, the cat inspector had to see what I was working on. And yes, he did try to eat some of the glue gunk. Unfortunately, I was faster. I also remove her antenna, which reminded me more of a butterfly than a moth. Then her head will go to an acetone bath for two hours. Just a plain old doll head in a jar, nothing special here. After that, I will fish out the head and fill it with stuffing to prevent deformation while it slowly shrinks over a two-day period. While we are waiting on the head to be done shrinking, I printed out a picture of Altomeris Frankai. I was not able to find a common name for this moth, but its genus Altomeris is often referred to as eyed silk moths, after the eye-like patches on their hind wings. There is more than 120 species in this group of eyed silk moths. To really get that moth-like furry look on her wings, I will be trying out needle felting. It's been a while since I last did this as a child, so wish me luck. I purchased some wool in different colors and a pack of felting needles. I made a base out of scrap pieces of packing foam. I made the base of the four wings off camera. Now that we have a base to work on, we can start adding the different colors and details. I try to work one color at a time and in layers. The wings have a faint purple stripe and a larger patch to the upper corner. 
To get a lighter shade of an existing color, I mix in white with a pulling and pinching motion. Neil felting is quite simple. You just place your piece of wool where you want it and then stab it with a needle. This is why you need a base of foam or like a proper needle felting tool that looks like an oversized brush without the handle. But like every craft you try, it takes a while to learn how the material moves and how best to manipulate it. I made a small test piece of camera before I jumped into making my final wing pieces. They ended up getting a pack of single needles, but if you want to make larger items and with less detail, you can get a multi-tool that has several needles in one. The wings were the most time-consuming part of this doll, and that's why I wanted to get them done early into the project. The rest of the doll ended up being relatively simple, but the end result doesn't look that way because the wings really are show-stopping. It took me about three quarters of one season of Supernatural to finish. So 45 minutes per episode times 17 episodes comes out roughly 12 hours spread over the course of two days. Did I hyper focus on them like the non-diagnosed neurodivergent person that I am? Yes, yes I did. And that's also the reason I did not film all that. It would make a very boring video. Would the multi-tool with several needles sped up the process? Not really, because the fine detail work that you need to use the single needle took up most of the time. And I also had to flip the pieces over and gently stab the loose fibers back in while being mindful of the pattern that I was creating on the other side. The right side of the wings is much more detailed and refined, as the back side is more blurry. But that's often the case in moth and butterfly wings. The underside looks completely different. I finished off the wings just in time for the head to be done shrinking, but still a bit soft so that I could put it back on the doll. To be able to attach the extra arms, we need to drill a hole through the doll's torso. I do this with my Dremel tool. You can also use a hand drill or like a driver with a drill bit. But I do recommend this tool. If you want to get into serious doll customizing, it comes handy quite often. Once the hole is the correct size, I use hot glue and some water protecting the arm to make a nice impression of the ball joint. The hot glue will also help with the posing, something I didn't add to my mantis doll. The arms are kind of floppy and move in weird ways when you try and pose them. I paint the arms yellow. And believe me, matching this yellow was so difficult. And this is my best attempt. It also didn't help that the plastic has this translucent quality to it that the paint is just unable to match. The vinyl head also lightened a bit from the acetone treatment and she also has some scratches or rip marks on the vinyl across her upper lip, nose bridge and left side of her forehead. So the paint will help to disguise that as well. I sprayed it all with the first coat of sealant outside while wearing a respirator mask. I would give her some purple eyeshadow, so in preparation of that, I lay down a layer of white chalk pencil and blend it out with pastel in white. I also use pan pastel pink this time on her cheeks, nose and chin. I want her to have spooky eyes, so I'm going with a grey sclera this time. On the joints I use a grey pastel, as well as for the rest of the shading on her body. A white layer on her lips first will make the pink I will add later really pop. I seal the entire doll the second time. For her face up and hair, I took inspiration from this doll created by Sugarlumped Gift Shop on Instagram. I layer some different shades of pastels to create her eyeshadow. I also detail her lips and add a few creases around the eyes. The irises will be white for that creepy glow that stares at you in the night. The third coat goes on. 
You can really see here what people mean, but the color won't build anymore. I was able to add just a little hint of white before a new layer of sealant. She doesn't have hair yet, but I do know it's going to be white, so the eyebrows will match. I really pack in the purple pastel to get it to be nice and intense. Turning the corners of her mouth slightly upwards will give a cute shy expression to her face. I do the other eye, and I feel like her heavy makeup needs some black liner to feel balanced. Then we get really close to do the lashes. Her face has more texture than a plain vinyl head because of the shrinking and paint, so the lashes came out a bit crinkly. I was about to do her top lashes, but decided before that I should add some Pearlex powder. I use Interference Violet on her cheeks and Dua Red Blue on the lids. I also tap in some Micro and Macro Pearl on top of her eyes for that hazy look. Then it's time to seal it all in. Then I can carry on with her lashes. It was hard getting her eyebrows to show up on her yellow skin, so I used some acrylic paint and a brush to add fluffiness to them. I also add some extra paint to her forehead hairs. The eye shines are a star shape this time with a couple of small dots as well. Her cheek get a sprinkling of white too. Then I seal her the final time. To protect the blushing on her body, I will use this matte varnish. I spread a thin coat working quickly and then let it dry overnight. Her face up has a lot of shimmer to it, so I thought a more natural finish on the lips would look good. But I changed my mind. I went back to using Tamiya Gloss Glaze. Talking about this glaze, some people have had issues with it turning sticky over the years. I have not had issues, but I have noticed that on my older customs, if you touch the varnish, it's more likely to leave a hazy layer, kind of like a fingerprint, than a coat that's fully dried but just applied, if that makes sense. Because of the layers of sealant and matte varnish, the duochrome effect of the Pearlex powder is almost gone. I decided to try mixing the pigment with this Master Medium by Green Stuff World. And applied this way, it did intensify the effect. Her body is done, let's move on to her hair. I had a tight schedule for this doll, so I went with this loose wool that came with the needle felting pack. I got two different packs, the super colorful one and a natural undyed one. I used some white glue, plastic bag and a silicone tool to turn the loose fibers into wefts. To add some color variety, I prepped some brown and pink yarn. Once the wefts are dry, I peel them off the plastic and trim the excess off. I can then start gluing the wefts to her head, starting from the back and working my way around the head in a spiral. To make the bangs super wispy, I use some loose fibers. I keep going until there is no scalp left. The top wefts are very small and the fiber is so puffy that it hides the top part super well, without the need of an actual parting wefts. Even though I love the poofy look, she does need a trim to not look absolutely crazy. She would not be a moth doll without a poofy neck. I used first the pink wefts and then the brown ones. I'm glad I used different colors for this part than what I used on her hair. I trim the neck poof to a more moderate size and smooth it down using hair gel. Because her hair is made out of a natural fiber, I should be able to style it like human hair. So I first get it wet. 
I did try to avoid her scalp the best I could. The glue can take a little bit of water but not a soak, so do this gently. I then apply styling mousse all over. I use toilet paper to get the excess water off. I don't have a diffuser for my hair dryer, so I had to put some tights over the nozzle and use a low air setting. It looked really bad until it was completely dry. I was thinking for a moment that I had just ruined her hair. To define the curls a bit, I applied more of that hair gel. And now she totally looks like the fourth member of the Golden Girls. I love it. I thought about so many ways to make her antenna, but then genius idea came to me. I could trim a pair of feathers to the right size, and they would have the perfect hairy look of the moth's antenna. I added a pin with glue for stability and used the existing holes on her head. We have all the main pieces of her body done, so let's start to assemble them starting from her arms. I used some twine to add detail to them, hence her other pair of arms has some amazing sculpting on them, and I thought I could never match that with my own sculpting skills. I added some rings and bracelets as well. I made a couple more accessories out of broken jewelry bits, a crystal bead, cork and twine. I don't know where exactly I will be placing these, maybe as a necklace or a belt perhaps. Like I mentioned earlier, I will use some elastic to string the arms together. The right way around, of course. Then, to fix her wings in place. I make a small pocket underneath this small flap to be able to hide the wire I will use to create the joint. I use a thick needle to poke a hole for the wire to go through. I used aluminium wire for this because it's more pliable. I form a loop at the end of the wire to act as a stopper. I then feed the wire through the hole I just made with the thick needle. I then grab the forewing and poke a hole through it. Through the hole I insert the wire and now the hindwing and forewing are stacked together. I then form the second loop out of the wire to keep the wings in place. Because the wings are made out of wool, they have a natural friction against each other and the wire acts as an axle and the wings can move independently from it, while the wire stays stationary. The middle part of the wire gets turned into a loop that I can insert to the doll's back. To hide the wire on the other side, I felted a tiny patch of that pink wool and added it to the forewing, being careful not to go all the way through to the other wing, getting them stuck together. I used hot glue to keep the wire in place. I was prepared to add some magic sculpt on top of that, but the hot glue was enough to secure them in place. Her neck ruffle helps to hide the ugly bits. I wanted to give her some clothing, but not a lot so that I would not cover all the work I did on her body. I have been really enjoying making corsets for my dolls, and I thought a corset type rigid garment on an insect doll could be seen as a stylized exoskeleton. This is by far the most versatile technique of making patterns for doll clothes. I just used cling film and masking tape. I also used some paper to get the parts that come away from the body. I then transfer them to my fabrics. I chose this maroon cotton and some sparkly stretchy fabric that has a very insect-like iridescent finish on it. I start the assembly by sewing the darts at the chest. I then close up the front seam. The tricky side seams are next. The corset idea ended up morphing into this backwards vest thing with tuxedo-like insect butt back flaps. 
It looks cool, but I have no idea how to describe it. I glued down the two layers to get rid of the stretch on the silver fabric and to prevent the cotton from fraying. The glue also made the piece nice and rigid too. I wanted the lining fabric to be more visible, so I designed some patterns that I cut out and glued on to the garment. I want to lace up the back and I saw Pixie and Tori use rings as connection points for the ribbon, so I thought I could try it out here. This is a great trick if you made your garment slightly too big, because the two sides can overlap a little, depending on where you place them. I slip her onto her corset and now she is done. I added some extra details of camera, like her belt with the crystal bottle, piercing on her lip, and an extra o-ring to keep the deep neckline of her garment where it needs to be. I knew while working on her that she was going to be my new favorite. Every time I finish a doll, it becomes my favorite, until I make a new one. But I think she is going to be one of my all-time favorites. I'm so proud of how she came out, and I could not imagine changing anything about her design. She has some small flaws here and there, but nothing major that would annoy me over time. Don't forget to check out the rest of the videos. I think everyone's creations came out amazing and the different interpretations of our theme are just breathtaking. Thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't yet done that, like this video and leave a comment. I would love to know what you think of my moth girl. Until next time, bye! This is a great this is a great, this is a great, this is a great, this is a great trick, great trick. This is a great. Th